Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. In today's detailed video, we're going to examine the gruesome murder of Venezuelan drug kingpin Ronaldo El Taliban Fuentes Campos. He was dumped alive into the ocean after betraying a cartel and stealing a massive multi-million dollar cocaine shipment and cash that was destined for the lucrative British Virgin Islands drug market. Fuentes, who was 68 years old, was seen on a chilling video footage with his hands bound behind his back by zip ties. He had been viciously beaten with blood dripping down the back of his head. A weight was tied around his waist and he was gagged, unable to cry out for help before being hurled into the Caribbean Sea to drown near the island of Martinique on July 17th this year. According to what I found, Fuentes was a native of Sucre, Venezuela, and had three children still living there from a previous relationship. He earned the ominous name El Taliban due to his shadowy dealings with Middle Eastern drug traffickers to move heroin. You guys think Fuentes was just a normal guy? No. Fuentes rose to become a kingpin controlling drug distribution in his Buenos Aires neighborhood, where his ruthlessness earned him the Taliban moniker. Two of his top lieutenants had previously died in a spectacular shootout with Venezuelan police. An investigation of that incident led authorities to cash a weapons stash in a house that reportedly belonged to Fuentes' operation. It's believed that Fuentes was gruesomely murdered in retaliation by the fearsome Mexican golf cartel after he perpetrated an elaborate double cross. He was entrusted with smuggling approximately 200 kilos of cocaine worth over $10 million to the British Virgin Islands. But in a bold scam, Fuentes dumped a huge shipment into the sea and spun a fake story to his bosses that the Venezuelan Coast Guard had intercepted the drugs. He then brazenly returned to retrieve the floating cocaine bales, repackaged them, and diverted the massive illicit shipment to another Caribbean island to sell himself. When Gold Cartel members caught wind of the ripped narcotics and money, they set up a meeting with Fuentes and subsequently kidnapped, tortured, and brutally executed him. The video of his killing shows his cowardly actors taking pains to hide their identities, with one saying, make sure none of our faces can be seen. This points to the possible involvement of corrupt allies of Venezuelan dictator Nicolas Maduro, who is known to enable drug cartels to operate in his country. In fact, some organizations active in Venezuela have been designated as terrorist groups by the United States government. Maduro himself was indicted in 2020 for leading a sprawling narcotics ring involving members of his own family and high-ranking military leaders. This criminal network is called the Cartel of the Sons. It is also believed that Fuentes was able to live as a fugitive in the Dominican Republic using a fake ID under the name of Miguel Folca. He had been staying in the home of a prominent lawyer and caring for her daughter in the city of Bano before being lured into the trap that led to his final gruesome moment. The brutal hit on Fuentes exposes the utter ruthlessness of international drug cartels against those who cross them. He paid the ultimate price after succumbing to greed and trying to trick his criminal bosses out of millions. The chilling video of El Taliban helplessly sinking into the ocean is a stark warning that cartel violence stops for no one. The savage death of Fuentes demonstrates the cutthroat nature of the illegal narcotics trade that brings in billions in profit. Fuentes lived violently as a feared drug lord and died in one of the most violent ways imaginable when they found out what type of scheme he was getting himself involved in, which was stealing from a cartel, which is something you should never do. His tortured end serves as a cautionary tale of how the risky drug business frequently ends for his opportunistic players. Let me tell you a little background about El Taliban and how he rose to be so ruthless. Fuentes was known for his violent enforcement tactics and ruthless killings of anyone who crossed him. At the height of his power in early 2000s, Fuentes commanded an army of hundreds of armed men in Venezuela. In 2003, he survived an assassination attempt when more than 60 bullets were fired at his armored SUV in Caracas. Three of his bodyguards were killed, but El Taliban escaped unharmed. In 2005, he fled the Dominican Republic to avoid arrest after Venezuelan authorities seized three tons of cocaine linked to his organization. This is when he obtained fake documents using the alias Miguel Folcar. Fuentes had strong ties to Colombia's notorious North del Valle cartel and would coordinate shipments of up to 20 tons of cocaine at a time from Colombia to Venezuela by plane and go fast boats. Much of it ended up in the US. He owned lavish properties in Venezuela and the Dominican Republic 
along with a fleet of expensive cars and speedboats. Fuentes was known for his extravagant lifestyle funded by drugs. In 2008, he was sanctioned by the US Treasury Department under the Kingpin Act which targeted major international narcotics traffickers. This froze any assets he had under US jurisdiction. Right up until his brutal murder, Fuentes was still heavily involved in smuggling cocaine from Venezuela to Caribbean islands for distribution in the lucrative US and European markets. Thank you guys for tuning into today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any suggested videos for me to do. I'll have a look at them. And yeah, till next time.